north off I-94 at the Dowling exit, which allows for quick pickup and drop off with plenty of free parking. And yes, we still print everything. I moved to MP Uptown because as a black business owner, I want to be in North Minneapolis and help provide jobs. At MP Uptown, we pay above living wages, hire people who have made mistakes in the past, and believe in social justice. We have over 175 Google reviews with a five-star rating. Let us handle your next print project because when you support our business, you support the community. Call 612-870-0777 or visit mpuptown.com. That's mpuptown.com. We print everything. Hey, this is Ellie Krug with Ellie 2.0 Radio. Did you know that we've been doing this show for six years on AM 950? And it's one of the only, I think it may be the only show about idealism in all of Radioland. And now the show's at 4 o'clock on Saturdays and still from 1 to 2 on Sundays. It'll be part of a new concept, a series of LGBTQ-hosted shows and podcasts. Make sure to check it out. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for cloudy skies and scattered rain today with a high near 56. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 44. And Thursday, partly sunny with a high near 55. Get your lawn ready for warmer weather. Is it the lush green lawn you want it to be? If not, Natural Lawn can help. They take an organic-based approach to lawn care that's safe for your family and pets. Don't wait for summer. Visit NaturalLawn.com to make your lawn and be worthy. That's NaturalLawn.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. Broadcasting live on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, as well as in the evenings on WCPT 820, Chicago's Progressive Talk. It is the Matt McNeil Show for your Wednesday. Jeff Stein going to be joining us today. Patrick is here with us today. Patrick, how are we today? Uh, not doing too bad. How are you today? I'm I'm doing well now that spring has sprung. You've got the, the, the birdies and the, the plants are starting to, to get green and stuff, and it feels pretty good. I do enjoy that part of the season. Uh, I will say, uh, I want to give up. Have you ever tried to buy stock? I have not. No. All right. Don't try now with Trump stock. Okay. Oh, darn. It just <laughs> ruined my whole life plan. I know your evening was, you were looking excited there. Um, Trump stock. Um, okay. So first of all, for everyone out there, um, I'm not a financial planner, uh, but I, I've, I've done enough finance shows and radio to where I actually can do this to a point. And I will say this, uh, stock buying stock, individual stocks is like trying to gamble in Vegas. It generally doesn't work too well for you. So I'm not a big fan of that, but there are people out there that like to do it. The Trump stock. And I'm enjoying watching what's happening here because there is a huge sign that about a bunch of people are about to get just absolutely jobbed. The stock is up today, uh, almost three and a half, a little more than three and a half points. Uh, to 2640. Wow. Recovering almost back to 70. No, not really. But once again, as the financials of that company become more and more openly known, I mean, like, it, like Hal Sparks, like I said, and I said this now the last few days, Hal Sparks pointed out the profits that company made, it still is in massive debt, but the profits it's made were less than a single standing Chick-fil-A restaurant makes in a single year. And you, you're paying $70 per share for stock for this. I mean, that's insane. And, and like I said, I mean, if, if I was to evaluate the stock and I'm not got one of these people to do it, I'd say probably, you know, $2, maybe $3 a share. Sure. Not 70. So you knew this tumble was coming. There are a lot of really stupid Republicans with money who quickly threw their money into truth social thinking this was going to be something big. And now it's plummeted down. And what, what you're basically, what you're, what you're getting right now, what I'm seeing in today is I think that the people that do have money are realizing to a point they got duped because it was Trump. And so Today feels like what's what is the beginning of a false inflation. What they're trying to do is get the stock up to a certain price. And if they can get it up, I mean, it's at 26 now. 
they can get up to like 28, maybe 30, which I highly doubt they will dump all their shares. And we're talking about people that have enough money to where they can buy enough shares to increase the value almost themselves. A handful of people can do this. They flood the market. I mean, you look at the number of trades out there the day, it's, it's, it's pretty high. And that kind of implies to me, that's not a lot of individuals going, I like to buy three shares. No, it's not that. It is, I, I think that this is the beginning of the real end of this because once these people abandon the stock, it's going to collapse completely. And you'll get a series of these. And then just, a, I'm just, this is more of just a heads up. You, you, it's falsely inflating the stock price by basically having the wealthiest people that own the stock throw a bunch of money into the stock at the lower rate, try to increase the price. Then they can offset their losses as well as also uh, not only they're offsetting their losses by raising the stock minimally, but if they can raise the stock enough to where for every share they bought it, say 24, they get it up to 28. I get some money that can offset some of it as well. And then they pull every dime out of it. If you're about your, my guess is conservative social media sites and conservative web pages and the conservative media, you're going to see ads for get Donald Trump stock now. It's a great deal. And you're going to be like, I, I, I never have got anything like that before. I'll start now. And I was going to buy, I was going to buy my 75th Trump flag, but I guess I'll buy some stock instead. Yeah, it's not going to go well for you. <laughs> it's not going to go. It's, it's a pump and dump. It's a pump and dump. You pump your money in there and then you dump the stocks once, once you get to a certain price and you get out of it. And this is it. This has the textbook, yeah, textbook earmarkings of that. So I am not, like I said, I am not a stock professional. You do what you do or don't do whatever it is you do or don't want to do. But I can look at that and I can say, yeah, that's not going to go well. That's that's going to go that's going to go really badly. I can you can kind of tell that nine five two nine four six six two zero five nine five two nine four six six two zero five is the phone number. I should mention um, it sounds like the um, first charge against Mayorkas has already been dismissed by the Senate Democrats. Um. The they they yeah they basically the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for the effort to oust my uh, Mayorkas, the least legitimate, least substantive, and least politicized impeachment trial ever. They voted to dismiss the first impeachment article against him, declaring it unconstitutional. The fifty-one forty-eight vote fell along party lines, along with Senator Markowski voting present. Uh, Democrats moved to table the charge outright because Mayorkas said actions as Homeland Security Chief don't rise to the constitutional standard of high crimes and misdemeanors, a view that even some Republicans share. In remarks to the Senate floor, Chuck Schumer called the effort to oust Mayorkas the least legitimate, least substantive, and most politicized impeachment in the history of the United States. And let me, let me say this. Them in trying to impeach Mayorkas over the border issue would be like them trying to impeach the Department of Transportation secretary because they were going to repave the interstates instead of with asphalt, with concrete. And how dare he, we're going to impeach him. That's quite literally what this is. They feel as if the they have created a false narrative on the border that is this apocalyptic zone, which it's not as they describe it. And then they want to prosecute him, not on the real world realities of it, but on their made up. Oh my God. Oh my God. How about Canada? Well, that doesn't matter. Oh yeah. And you see, like I said, I mean, that's, that's kind of who they are. So it, it is illegitimate. I do want to mention though. And by the way, watching Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz got, pants just with a very quick response by Schumer on the, the Senate floor when he, he came on out here and said, I don't know why you guys don't want to have a debate about this. I say we go to closed session and have a debate. And Schumer stands up and says, we offered you a public debate on an impeachment charge is what and what it should be. And you guys didn't want to do that in public. So this is not on us. This is on you. You want to debate. We can have a public debate. We're moving forward with these votes. And Cruz was livid, but it's the truth. They, 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 even the Republicans knew in the Senate knew it was such a politicized thing from the house 
that they didn't even want to debate this in public. They just wanted to basically close the doors, you know, and, and, and I think what Cruz and the rest of them were seeing was, do they have enough votes to possibly be able to, to pull this off? And they didn't, they did, they, they didn't. And needless to say, this is, it's, they, they desperately are trying to make this into an issue here. And I want to remind people, Donald Trump was caught red handed seeking influence from a foreign government into his, his presidency and his campaign, as well as also um, telling his administration uh, to ignore subpoenas. He was impeached on those charges first. They all voted no. Then he tried to overthrow the government of the United States of America and led a mob to attack the U.S. Capitol while building a gallows for his own vice president, screaming, hang Mike Pence, while they tore apart the U.S. Capitol building, stole a bunch of stuff, and then spread their feces over the building as they beat cops on the way out. And... They basically, you know, the, the republic, the, many of the same Republicans still voted against that. But Mayorkas deciding to use concrete instead of asphalt on repaving the highways. How dare he greatest injustice of all time? I mean, it just you can't make it up. That's why that's why they did not want to debate this in public. They absolutely did not want to debate this in public. The other thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned on top of the hour, and I'll touch on this with Stein. Stein going to be joining us here in just a little bit to talk national and presidential politics. House Republicans in Arizona on Wednesday scuttled another effort to repeal the state's 1864 law, banning abortion, defying pressure from prominent Republicans, including former President Trump, who had urged them to toss the ban that many voters viewed as extreme as ar archaic. The last thing we should be doing today is rushing the bill through the legislative process to repeal the law that's been enacted and reaffirmed by the legislature several times said House Speaker Tom Ben Toma, a Republican, as he blocked an effort to vote on the repeal. The Arizona Supreme Court ruling last week to uphold Civil War era near total abortion ban infuriated supporters of abortion rights, ex exhilarated abortion opponents, and set off a political firestorm in Arizona where Republicans narrowly control both houses of the state legislature, but foresaw the gavel political, uh, the great political threat. Repealing it would revert Arizona to a 15-week abortion ban. Republicans initially resisted Democrats' attempts to repeal the law. And by the way, let's not skip past that, that little thing there. Do you know how all these Republicans are like, hey, I don't know where you get this idea that we're against people having the right to get an abortion. I'm not for no exemptions for rape or incest or the life of the mother. I'm not a heartless coward. I'm, I'm not one of these people that sits there and says there should be no abortion options ever. I'm saying there should be a 15, 16 week ban. After that, yes, unless the life of the mother is in danger. Yes, this is their new nuanced conservative abortion policy. And yet here is a chance for them to show they actually agree with that abortion policy. And nope. <laughs> Nope, we're not going to go to the new moderate Republican stance on abortion. They're going to stay with the complete ban. Oh, don't get me wrong. I guarantee you Arizona will eventually pass something here that will, because they know they'll be looking at political suicide in the state of Arizona if they don't. And not only will it cost Trump Arizona, it will, it will cost them the House and the Senate in Arizona. And yeah, that's, that's, they don't want that. But it just shows you who these people are that once again, this is their nuanced new approach on states rights and abortion that we're, we're not against all this. And here you have a state, which is supposedly a toss up state where the Republicans there are supposedly nuanced. And yet once again, they're staying with the 1864 ban from when they were a territory as opposed to embrace their nuanced new policy. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a break. Come on back. Uh, the sports world got rocked. I'll talk about that. It's the Matt McNeil Show. Hey, it's Tom Hartman with Earth Month in full swing. Let's talk about how we can all make a difference for our planet. And what better way to do that than by harnessing the power of the sun? 
Solar energy is clean, renewable, and it's key to reducing our carbon emissions. And when it comes to solar installation in Minnesota, there's no one better than All Energy Solar. They've worked on thousands of projects, each custom designed for everything from single family homes to large commercial buildings. And with over 1,800 five-star reviews, you know you're in good hands with All Energy Solar. But here's the best part. Once All Energy Solar installs your system, it's hassle-free. It quietly harnesses the sun's energy, cutting your energy bills without any effort on your part. So let's make Earth Month more than just once a year. Take the first step toward a greener future by visiting allenergysolar.com for your free solar site assessment. That's allenergysolar.com. And tell them Tom sent you. Hi, Penny here from Nightingale in Minneapolis. Exciting news. During the warmer months, we're extending our charm to the patio. Imagine savoring your favorite dishes outside surrounded by the lively energy of South Minneapolis near 26th and Lindale. And guess what? Nightingale's patio is not just a dining space. It's also dog friendly. Craft cocktails, curated wines, and half-priced bottles of wine on Mondays are still part of the deal. Open daily 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. with a full menu until midnight. Join us at Nightingale where good times and great flavors come together. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef. So check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Seward Community Co-op is excited to host farmers and welcome supporters to our 23rd annual Community Supported Agricultural, or CSA, Fair. Join us on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Seward Co-op Creamery Building parking lot at 2601 East Franklin Avenue in Minneapolis. Dedicated to helping build a food system that values inclusivity, environmental responsibility, equity, and access, Seward Co-op will feature more than 30 local CSA farms that help contribute to a strong and vibrant local food system. Learn about local farms and speak directly with farmers to choose a CSA share that is right for you and your household. Midwest Food Connection will be there with activities for kids and a lot more. Learn about a variety of different CSAs, which offer vegetables, fruit, meat, cheese, bread, mushrooms, and add-ons like honey, maple syrup, eggs, and flowers. Others allow CSA shares to be customized to fit your needs, such as half shares and weekly purchase options. Go to seward.coop slash events for more information. It's the Matt McNeil Show on your Wednesday. Stein here in about uh, a little less than 15 minutes. Uh, this is the beginning. I'm going to tell you right now, you are about to, we are about to see, this is a big mess. And I've been talking about this for a while now, and it's only going to get worse. Commissioner Adam Silver of the NBA brought the hammer down. The league has banned Toronto Raptors two-way player, Jonte Porter for life, for life, due to his involvement in betting on NBA games. So we're not talking about a penalty. We're not talking him sitting a few games. When I saw he's banned for life, that told me, oh, they've got something here, don't they? A league investigation found Porter violated league rules by disclosing confidential information on sports bettors, limiting his own participation in one or more games for betting purposes and betting on NBA games. There is nothing more important than protecting the integrity of the NBA comp competition for our fans, our teams, and everyone associated with the sport, which is why uh, John T. Porter's blatant violations of our gaming rules are being met. With the most severe punishment, Silver said in the statement announcing the lifetime ban. I wonder if there were odds on what kind of ban he'd get. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the, the hypocrisy of it all. While legal sports bets creates, create transparency and helps identify suspicious and abnormal activity, this matter also raises important issues about the sufficiency and the regulatory framework currently in place, including the types of bets offered on our games and players. Working closely with all relevant stakeholders across the industry, we'll continue to work diligently to safeguard blah, 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 blah. This is the harshest penalty Silver could have handed down, but he needed to make a statement with the NBA and his teams doing more and more business with legal sports books in the 38 states where legal betting is, is where sports betting is legal. Next season's fans watching the NBA league pass, pass will be able to add the betting overlay to the games with real-time odds and links to betting. Wow. I'm going to tell you right now, 
there's a lot of sports places that are not even going to talk about this. And you know why? Because the betting money is too important and they don't want to upset their advertisers. Or else they'll definitely play. The, well, this is, you know, g- gambling is harmless. It, it does. No, you're turning the NBA into the WWE. That's what you're doing. Uh, the NBA's investigation found multiple instances of Porter violating league rules, particularly around prop bets, which can include a bet on an individual player's performance, which can be the easiest bets to manipulate, especially for the player that they're betting on. Before the Raptors played the Kings on March 20th, Porter told someone he knew in, to be a big NBA better about his health status, which was going to limit how much Porter could play in the game. A person Porter is associated with placed an $80,000 parlay prop bet on Porter's prop unders to win 1.1 million Potter uh, played three minutes in that game and left claiming an illness between January and March, 2024. Well, that was, so basically he fixed the game. Well, at least he fixed his portion of the game. Well, a member of the Raptors, um, 905 G league team Porter played at least 13 bets on NBA games for a total of $54,000 With Porter winning 21,965 on those bets, Porter did not play in any of those games, but the bets violated league policy. There was other suspicious betting around Porter and his limited participation in games. For example, on January 26th, when the Raptors played the Clippers, there was a spike in bets on Porter's prop unders, and then he played just four minutes in that game before saying he couldn't continue due to a re-aggravation of an eye injury. Potter averaged 4.4 points, 3.2 rebounds, and 2.3 assists per game, playing 14 minutes a night and 26 contests for the Raptors before being sent away from the team during this investigation. The only reason this came to light is because he was so stupid to re- that he did not realize a backup player all of a sudden getting a ton of bets would spark off a lot of red flags in the gambling industry. What should scare you is the amount of starters who are probably doing this. And I'm just going to call this out. I have zero doubt in every sport, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, probably the NBA, the major league soccer, any league where you can be, there is a betting line on it. I guarantee you there are starters in those leagues who are placing bets on these games. And where you don't want to get to is the level of Pete Rose, where he was betting as a manager, betting on his own team, which then when you look back on some of the player moves he made while he was betting on his own team, makes sense because he was trying to lose games. This is, and and it's because that the, the, the sports leagues quickly bought in to this gambling money. When the people say, there's just, it's harmless fun, and we're having this whole freaking debate, and everyone on the sports stations in this town, every stinking one of them is out there right now saying, there is not a single problem with wagering on a sporting event. Outside of that, there is the danger of these things becoming the freaking WWE. That if all of a sudden you have your star player on whatever team has to lose that game, because they're deep in debt to a bookie, all of a sudden, it's not nearly as harmless fun as you think it is. Because all the people that are betting on that game think a team's going to win when the star player on the team tanks the result, has a legitimate gripe about being screwed out of their winnings. It isn't harmless fun, and it's horribly addictive. I have met people who are addicted to gambling, and it is not pretty. But yet, this is the narrative we, oh, and and the only reason they're saying this is because the sports radio broadcasters, the sports TV programs, the, the betting lines, all this, there is so much freaking money available to them. There's so much money available to them, they dare not ever speak, saying, well, maybe this isn't the best idea. So these players go out into their arenas, and there's bet, 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 and there's... During the during the game, there's ads on the broad on the, the jumbotron talking about it's harmless fun. Everyone can have fun betting on the game. Here's the over unders. Here's how much they're going to score. You can place a bet real quick with the app on your phone. 
And then you act surprised, shocked. When all of a sudden a, a basketball player is caught red-handing, band, basically fitting, fixing bets on himself. You are a fool if you don't think for one second that this isn't going around in a much larger capacity. This is the great ugly secret of sports right now. We already know about Otani over in the Dodgers. Come on. There are so many problems with that story that kind of point at Otani himself being the guy that's placing the bets. I'm not saying he is. There'll be court cases. There'll be all that stuff. But the reality is, it does. It, it, there, there is a lot of questions. So we can sit here and constantly just say, oh, there's nothing to see here. It's just harmless fun. Or we can realize the real problem of this is it becomes fraudulent. And when we start having coaches or general managers or team owners who are addicted to gambling and placing bets on their own teams and then all of a sudden making mysterious moves, trading away players, sitting half the bench or half the starters, you know, it's you can see this train coming and this is the first stop. And this is only going to get worse. But reminder, as all the sports people who are taking the money from the gambling company say, it's only harmless fun. Stein up next. Now at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces, the Morso Wood Stoves qualify for a 30% tax credit. Morso Wood Stoves earned the Nordic Swan Eco Label, Europe's most rigorous environmental standard. Here in the U.S., these Morso Wood Stoves qualify for the 30% federal tax credit. This is a credit of up to $2,000 off your income tax when you install efficient wood heating. Morso wood stoves are known for elegant Danish design. Made of quality cast iron, this is furniture that radiates heat and warmth. Morso brings the tradition of wood heating into the 21st century. Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces has been selling wood-burning products since 1977. Morso is an important part of our diverse selection of fireplace products. We want to make fire work for you. Let us show you how Morso wood-burning stoves can work in your home. Get in touch with the folks at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces. They are the chimney and insulation experts. Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces has over 35 working wood, gas, and electric units on display at the corner of East Franklin and Riverside Avenue in Minneapolis. Come see the train chimp. It's the Matt McNeil Show, 3 to 5 p.m. weekday afternoons, right here on AM 950 KTNF, St. Louis Park, Minneapolis, St. Paul. No matter if you're eating out or cooking something at home, EatLocalMinnesota.com has you covered with a list of locally owned restaurants and food purveyors. Locally owned Vinaigrette has been offering the finest olive oil and vinegar since 2009. Reintroduce yourself to all the many flavors by tasting before you buy. From darker white balsamic to cold pressed extra virgin olive oil from all over the world, there is something for everyone. Vinaigrette, located at 50th and Xerxes in Minneapolis or at VinaigretteMN.com. The Park Tavern is your go-to destination for fun. Enjoy the fantastic food like their pizzas, burgers, and sandwiches, the best bowling in Minnesota, their wildly popular outdoor patio, great drink specials, all the big games on their numerous screens, and it's the perfect place for your next private event, even large gatherings for over 200. The Park Tavern is your go-to destination for everyone. Have fun at the Park Tavern, Louisiana Avenue, north of Highway 7 in St. Louis Park. AM 950 KTN up St. Louis Park, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Turn to Auto Technical with your vehicle donation. We have families waiting for a car. You know, over 85% of unemployed are successful in finding and keeping a job if they have dependable transportation. A car plus a job equals a life changed. 612-919-5526. We have families waiting for a car. 919-5526 or autotech.org. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for cloudy skies and scattered rain today with a high near 56. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 44. And Thursday, partly sunny with a high near 55. Experience a delicious dinner out at Nightingale. Indulge in the Nightingale burger, roasted duck breast, and more exciting dishes like the roasted broccoli bruschetta and smoked chicken liver plate. Takeout orders available at your convenience, and Nightingale is open daily 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. with their full menu until midnight. Or at NightingaleMTLS.com. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. 
Jeff, 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 Jeff. J E F F Jeff. J E F F Jeff. J E F F Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff Steins, our national and presidential Jeff, expert, Jeff, noted Jeff, author. Jeff, you can find your favorite his books at your favorite bookseller. Uh, of course, the Iowa politics, the four of the Iowa business report coming to us from KXEL in Cedar Falls, Waterloo, where Jeff is not joining us right now. He, uh, we do not have is that is the I mean, it is Iowa. I mean, they, they did have some rain. It could be down until they get the back 40 fixed. Could be. It's me. I'm Jeff Stein today. Are you? Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> well, this should be entertaining. Uh, so yeah, when we get Jeff, just go ahead and pop him on in here. We'll just, we'll, we'll have to go and see, see how he's doing there. Hopefully he's going to be able to join us here, uh, before too long. 952-946-6205. 952-946-6205 is the phone number. Cause I want to talk with him about primarily just the three things that we continue to talk about and the continued problem for the Republicans when it comes to this election cycle and that, that they are basically dooming themselves this election cycle, because there are some things you just do not do in an election cycle that, that they are doing. And it's going to be interesting. It's kind of like one of those things I've never seen anyone dumb enough to try these things, but they are trying them. He, he said he forgot. He said he forgot. What? What is he? Is there a pork chop fest or something like that down there? I don't know. Is but there a corn cob eating contest? Maybe he saw one of those pork tenderloin oh, sandwiches God, that's those, as big as your face. Those yeah, are a little, little lemon on there. Oh, that is a tasty, tasty thing. We well, do welcome Mr. Jeff Stein into the show now. Well, oh, okay. Well, thank goodness. Yeah, Tick tock goes the clock. What was? What was? What, what what were you doing that you could not it this is not like this is the first time say i was sitting at my desk and i was <laughs> really plowing through the to-do list and i'm thinking i am really getting a lot of things done well clearly it's because i forgot to come into the studio even yeah. though hours ago i replied and said oh i'm looking forward to it apparently i was looking forward to it and just blew past so i could I have said i was trying to influence trump jurors but I thought I'd be honest. I do love the fact that it's, it's your, now I'm your excuse for why you can't get your job done. You know, it's, a, it's a, McNeil. I mean, it's not the first person, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'd have gotten all this work done boss, but you know, yeah, yeah, Chicago, yeah, you know. Minneapolis, I'm, hesitant, I'm, I'm hesitant to tell you this. I am no. hesitant to tell you this. So this, this last week we had, well. no, it's going to go well for you, but it's just, <laughs> Uh, sexy liberal was in town. You know, the Stephanie Miller crew. Came I through. saw yeah. the photos. Did you, could you not get a seat? Because I, I mean, not. you post on social media photos of the backs of people's heads. Did you sneak in off the stage door or, or well, what? I was backstage. I was, I was, I was glad. Cause I mean, there was no seats available anywhere near. Oh, so I was going to be in the very good. back. So I stayed in the backstage and it was, it was yeah. kind of nice. Uh, Stephanie Miller and, and Fugel sang Hal Sparks, all those guys. Yep. Uh, Frangela Cliff Schechter was in town. And so we got, we got a chat with him and, uh, I saw a lot of people. We did an event beforehand. We did an event afterwards. I can't tell you how many people told me how much they like you. A lot of people actually said, is Jeff Stein here tonight? A lot of people <laughs> I am talking in the double digits and I am hesitant <laughs> to even tell you this because, you know, it's, I think the real problem why you were late is you couldn't get your damn head through the door. So. Well, now that's not true because I didn't know. Now, can I get out? No, certainly not. There are two things. One, were you selling alcohol at the event? A lot of it, yes. I think we've just answered the, the you know, I don't think well, we need was, to go further. Was, a lot of them were early, so they were fairly, they were only one or two in at this point. So don't worry. I don't think that that's a viable excuse. All right, so here's a, a remotely funny story. I mean, that's very sweet. First of all, very nice of you to mention it. Very, very nice of the listeners to have uh, paid attention to, to even know uh, when the monkey comes on. But a couple of weeks ago, I was doing some um, talks about my radio programs, my syndicated programs. I went to, uh, uh, it was Franklin County, which is right near I-35 for you, 
So it, yeah. it's Hampton and Ackley, and these are places that nobody in Chicago or Minneapolis knows about, but they're fine little towns. And I was there representing the affiliate that carries my programs. After tour stop number one, the first person to come up wanted to talk to me about the national host I fill in for. Not about me, wanted to talk about the national host. Tour stop number two, first person who came up after the presentation did not want to talk about me, wanted to talk about the national host that I fill in for. So when stop number three came up and I finished, I just left without talking to anyone because I didn't need to hear it yet again. So I feel for you because I've been on both ends of it. And, and, uh, I I'm very happy that people enjoy this, uh, this bit of randomness that occasionally I forget to show up for. Yeah. I, I did have a lot of, yes, John Fugel saying smells like lavender puppy dogs and rainbows. I had a lot of that too, but at the same time, it was com- completely spontaneous out of the blue. You do have a fan base, my friend. You're you well, it's because of you and tolerating uh, this dog and pony. But uh, thank you, folks. I uh, I would have been there, but I wasn't invited. So <laughs> after all the years you tried to get me to come to the Blue State Ball and I rejected it, I, that's kind of the inside joke on this. Why would you invite me? I never leave town. Well, I'll tell you what, the next Blue, I, I'm going to come down and get you for the next Blue State. I have to, apparently, at this point. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I was briefly talking about uh, yes, while we were setting up here. I, OK, so, uh, yeah. All right. We'll talk about, you know, sleepy McCourtroom in a second. But the. All right. So Arizona, the, the, the House there just voted down repealing the 1864 law. So basically, you have an issue that has been destroying Republicans and not only and it would automatically repeal to a 15 week ban. This is their new Republican moderate stance on abortion. Yet they don't even want to go there. You have as well Marjorie Taylor Greene and now Massey down in the House basically saying that Johnson is done because how dare you help Ukraine? Thanks, Vlad. But, you know, it's that there that's going to be done and you're going to have a chaos in that House again. And then and we've talked about that last week and we're talking about as well. Again, the, the RNC funneling all the money away. I. This is I cannot believe these guys are thinking that this is the way you're going to win majorities of anything, let alone even like plus four or five houses and senates for the Republican side. You're going to get destroyed because you don't have the money. You look like you're a chaotic bunch of fools and you're embracing extremist policies. And yet I keep waiting for them all to say, "Okay, that's all behind us. Now we're going into the regular election and they cannot seem to quit this. Nobody has a plan. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm sorry, but there was no plan post Dobbs. And I will go so far as to say for both sides, because for 49 years and three months, each side had their own talking points. They had their own fundraising. They had everything. Okay. If you're on the left side of the political spectrum, you didn't dream that role would be overturned. John Roberts didn't want to overturn it. I mean, he was trying to moderate things, quote unquote, moderate things. If you're on the right, well, most of those folks don't remember, it's true on both sides, they don't remember a time before. So what's the alternative? Well, got to get rid of Roe. Okay, now what? It's the same thing, and I don't mean to be flip about it, but it's like the dog who chases cars for a living and then catches one. Well, now what do I do? I can't drive. And and this has been the problem. So you're in Arizona. Okay, got to got to revert back to the old law. Did anybody think about writing a new one? And when the house down there says, we're not going to repeal the old law, some of them are saying, well, no, wait, why don't we actually create a law as opposed to upper, but there was no plan. And here's what it did in Arizona. A month ago, Kerry Lake was ahead of the Democrat uh, the presumptive nominee. Actually, I, have they had the primary? In any case, it, it's, know, it's know. you know, Ruben Gallegos. I can't, I can't remember. That's, that's, the, that's the front runner, yes. Okay. She was ahead. Then this happened. The court ruling in Arizona that reverted back to a pre-Civil War law or whatever it is. Keep in mind, Arizona became a state in 1912. You're going back to territorial legislation with this. And what has happened? The lead flipped. It flipped. It's like a six point swing in what was already a tight race. And she changed her position totally. 
from when she ran for governor to when she's now running for U.S. Senate. Now, changing your position is not a bad thing. Politicians on all sides do it. The speed with which you do it, uh, given certain circumstances, is, is entertaining. But there's no plan. And how in the world can you possibly suggest that you've got the right policy when you have no plan? And don't even start with the House of Representatives. And now I see that the Senate simply dismissed the articles of impeachment. I mean, I would like to say we as citizens, Matt, deserve better, but we keep electing these fools. Mm -hmm. So we get what we deserve. Well, I mean, it's, you know, going after my orcas because of policy decisions is like going after the transportation secretary because he paved the road the way you didn't like him to. Don't and say then, that. You Cuba. just gave people an anti mayor Pete talking point <laughs> what is the matter with you <laughs> all right i want to bring up something here and this is i think you're oh, going no, to wait, my... wait marjorie taylor green just tweeted that she's going to go after mayor pete because of a paving project uh, see yeah. <laughs> look at that look what you did the communist paving unions uh <laughs> okay so i want to bring up an interesting element of this so okay. you and i have watched somewhat sadly as local small town media has been wiped out the yeah. newspapers are gone. Most of the radio stations in small town America are now just broadcasting other networks and stuff like this. There really aren't news outlets in these towns. When you, I think we're about to see the impact of getting rid of all this local news and making things so national that the Arizona House impacts the, how in toss up districts in Iowa and in Illinois and in Minnesota are affected here in these races because it's no longer you just have to deal with the one crazy clown car Republican per se in your state. Now you have to deal with, because there is no local news. There is no local perspective. All these papers and radio stations are now gone. You're now competing with the extremism of other states as well. Talk about that a little bit. Well, when you've got a situation where, and let's just talk radio for a moment. Yep. Uh, you work for a locally owned and operated station in the Twin Cities. Indeed. The folks in Chicago, it's locally owned and operated, right? Yep. I work for a, a, a company that's that's uh, based in Iowa, and they own three dozen stations in four states, but it's not like they own 1,100 stations. All yes. right. And the problem is when you've got companies that own six, seven, 800 stations, and they also own syndicated networks. You know, the iHearts of the world, premier radio networks, they're all same ownership. Well, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have the, the masters say, you, local station, have to air the syndicated programs that we want you to carry. So you've got no diversity of voices, of impact, anything across the country. So how in the world can you possibly cover your local area when they say, well, why should we hire a host? Because we've got national folks who can fill in. Syndicated programming to a large degree is the death of local radio. And that's why what you do and, and what I do are, 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 you know, we're just standing out in the field. Because, and frankly, it's why people notice it. Because the rest of the stuff just all blurs. And, you know, a daily newspaper, Lee Enterprises, okay, big company. Um, most of their afternoon dailies are now three days a week. Yeah, they're updated online, but they, they don't even deliver. You get it in the mail. So when your robust town newspaper, and I'm talking about places of 50 to 60,000 people, and they don't have a daily newspaper, and it comes in the mail three days a week, you're not going to get the depth of coverage. And online just doesn't cover it for everything anymore. I remember I was looking at a newspaper at the Masabi Daily News, and this was, I think, last summer, mm -hmm. and their big editorial was on DeSantis. And I'm like, because <laughs> none of the lower, I mean, there was one guy writing local news, but there was no opinion things. It was all these national APs and stuff like this. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just, it, it is gone. And this is the problem is that Arizona's house actually is going to impact these small town races because it's the only news they're getting at it for the most part at this point. And it affects them all down the line. We got to take a break. When we come on back, we'll, we'll let you finish. I'll let you answer on to that point. And then we'll get into sleepy time with Donald Trump. It is Jeff Stein joining us for his usual weekly visit right here on the Matt McNeil show. Hi, 
my name is Caddy from Minnesota Recovery Connection. And I'm Erin with Minnesota Recovery Connection. We'd like you to listen to our show, Redefining Recovery, A Recovery Revolution. It is on Saturdays at 10 a.m. on AM 950. On the show, we discuss topics about addiction, understanding substance use disorder, the many pathways to recovery, and finding your personal journey. Listen to Redefining Recovery Saturdays at 10 a.m. and find our podcast on your favorite app. Car shopping is made super easy with Rudy Luther Toyota's Luther Direct. It's car shopping without ever leaving your home. Go to RudyLutherToyota.com and click on Luther Direct. Choose any vehicle in Rudy Luther Toyota's current inventory, either new or certified pre-owned. Then find out what kind of value you can get for your trade-in, review a payment plan you qualify for, and customize it. And then set up a time for Rudy Luther to drop off your new vehicle and pick up your trade-in. It's that simple. Your new vehicle comes to you without any of the hassle. Check out Luther Direct today at Rudy Luther toyota.com would you let animals pick your insurance you really need to experience mayhem to get the best rates or how about a celebrity quarterback or fake university saving you money there's a lot of marketing stunts when it comes to insurance but what you really need is someone looking out for you all array insurance and they will work hard to find you the best insurance coverage and rates so avoid gimmicks and call cheryl at array 763-504-3067 or arrayinsurance.com Array Insurance, working hard for you. Hi, I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. Your hosts for Searching for Service. Tune in to Rotary's influential show and podcast, sharing touching stories of service locally and abroad. We bring you weekly guests that connect, inform, and inspire our listeners on all things service. We highlight diverse service opportunities that appeal to both Rotarians and people driven to serve in their communities. Tune in Sundays at 3 p.m. or anytime via podcast. It's time to stop searching and start serving. Hi, this is Chad, owner of AM950, with an important message on home energy efficiency from my trusted contractor, Snap Construction. The Inflation Home Reduction Act has produced unprecedented benefits to homeowners with inadequate insulation. The IRS is now offering up to 30% back on all materials used. And for a short time, our local Twin Cities energy providers are offering up to $3,000 back in additional rebate. Snap Construction is a preferred contractor of XL and Centerpoint Energy. XL Energy has even recognized Snap Construction as a top performing installer thanks to their excellent service and customer reviews. So don't wait. These energy partner benefits won't last long. Call Snap Construction to take advantage of the Home Reduction Act and get a free inspection. They are approved to get you your maximum rebate. Schedule your free, no-hassle appointment with Minnesota's most well-reviewed contractor, Snap Construction, by calling 612-333-SNAP or visit snapconstruction.com. Broadcasting in the evenings on WCPTA 20 Chicago's Progressive Talk and in the afternoons on AM 950, the Progressive Voice of Minnesota. It's the Matt McNeil Show. I got to read, Jeff, you are a freaking genius, man. You were the first one I heard say that eventually this was the way it was going to go. And holy gosh, you're a prophet again. (laughs) The campaign for Donald Trump's 2024 presidential bid has come up with a new way to raise cash, which involves calling on down ballot candidates who use his name and likeness and fundraising pushes to give him a cut of the money that they raise. Beginning tomorrow, we will ask all candidates and committees who choose to use Trump's name, image, and likeness, split a minimum of 5% of all fundraising solicitations to Trump National Committee. This includes, but is not limited to, sending the House file, pro- prospecting vendors, and advertising. Uh, this is from uh, the, a letter from his campaign manager wrote, and it was a claim by Politico. You and I said it. Eventually, it's, it's the biggest shakedown in history. I think it, he's just looking for... He's looking for the biggest freaking payoff he can get right now because I think that he even knows it's going to be a tough sell for him come November. He's the big guy. Oh, he yeah. gets a cut of everything. <laughs> Which this is cause you. This is why you and I laugh. <laughs> sure, sure, you get a cut. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, it's oh golly. What I found interesting was I got a news release today from a candidate. I think in Wisconsin eight. I probably don't have that right, but in any case. He is the only, there's a primary and he claims to be the only Trump endorsed candidate in the primary, which if you think about it, I would hope so. I mean, what point is there to endorsing multiple candidates? But that's besides the point. Does that mean now, if you've gotten the Trump endorsement, you're going, wait, if I use the endorsement, I've got to pay a spiff. 
I mean, that's what that sounds like, doesn't it? Well, and can I make this point? Hmm. Why not go out there and basically endorse 12 of the candidates in any given race? Because now all of them can, if they use the Trump name in their, in their thing, that's money coming back to the House. There's a candidate in Iowa running against an incumbent wow. Republican. All right. An incumbent. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, we did a, an interview and he was talking about uh, being at things with Trump and he was close to getting an endorsement from Trump. He already has Mike Lindell as an example. And I'm thinking at this point, do you go, do I really need the endorsement? Because again, it's going to cost me money. It's mm -hmm. sort of like, uh, if you were throwing a wow. fundraiser and, um, well, let, let's say there are Democrat, uh, democratic candidates, DFL candidates in your area. And they, uh, they said, you know, we'd like to have you come and speak at a fundraiser. And you said, well, I would love to, but my fee is $1,500. It sort of defeats the purpose of the yeah. fundraiser when you go in the hole as the organizer because you're paying the talent more than you're going to bring in. I'm well, just and it, well, and it does bring forward, as you said that. So I wonder with the Trump endorsement now, Mm -hmm. Do you get a demand? I'll give you the endorsement, but you have to use Trump on all your documents and I get 5% of the cut. Well, I mean, at least it's a percentage as opposed to a flat rate. Oh, and I, you, you, do you think that that rate is going to stay yeah. the same? Or I think that I think that that rate is going to go up higher and higher and higher. I really do. What, as opposed to 5%? You think the 5% yeah. is going to go? I think, I think it's eventually, I, I honestly think it's going to be eventually I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if by September it's 25%. If okay, you, so, I mean, so let's say it's it's 5% if you mention his name, 10% if you use a photo, 15% uh, if there's a quote attached to it. I mean, I could see this is like going to Dairy Queen. And, and the amount of money that you pay for the Sunday depends on how many toppings. If you say you just want the hot fudge, that's fine. But if you want nuts, we're throwing extra. Cherry, I'm sorry, that's that's more. That's what this is coming down to be. How, isn't it? how dare you disgrace a great Minnesota company like Dairy Queen? It's like going to Dairy Queen. It's the only flavor they have is circus peanut. <laughs> Who just disgraced a fine Minnesota company? <laughs> Dairy Queen. I, okay. Um, you, you've you been in court before. You have local chops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now, now, let's be clear. As the lawyer, not like you, I've been in court representing individuals. Yes, you have been in, as, as a person who's been, have you ever had a client who just gets nappy and wants to halfway through as they're going through the jury selection of the trial, falling asleep? Oh, hell I did. Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, some of did these, you are, actually fall, did no, you ever I, fall asleep? No. Okay. I, not that I remember, but again, I would have been asleep, but the, the, the problem of it is it's not that a person falls asleep during a court proceeding. Because frankly, they're not that riveting. It ain't like on TV, okay? Yeah. But when you have glossed your opponent with the name Sleepy Joe, you have one job, and that is to not fall asleep publicly. <laughs> well, it is. It's just the only thing you can't do is nap. All right, in, in nap in public, and he was napping so hard they did a courtroom sketch of him sleeping. <laughs> that, that is... And you also don't say your opponent is crooked for wanting a take of business that comes in, oh, and then want a cut of the business. Ugh. I mean, it's it's this is the thing, and I'm talking just broadly from a political standpoint. You're like, you people are crazy. You people who are running for office are absolutely nuts. And oh. and it's it's just it gives us something to talk about, I guess. Um the the jury selection, I don't know where they're at. They were at 7 yesterday. They got 0 the first day. They got 7 yesterday. I don't know if they have they've filled up their a day off. Wednesday oh, is day usually day. a day off because the judge takes care of other matters so that you then have trial on Monday, Tuesday, trial on Thursday, Friday, and in between the judge takes care of uh, whatever else comes up. Well, building some bunk beds in the courtroom, apparently. So <laughs> getting a hammock in there. Well, he's when already offered him a bed. Now, granted, no. there are there, you know, there there's a locked door, but he's already offered him the the cot. Oh God. Uh, my orcus is uh, it looks like both things on my orcus are now dismissed. And so yep. that's that's done. I I just 
do you think one last quick question here? I've got about mm-hmm. 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. Do you think the threat of Speaker Jeffries, w- will it be Speaker Jeffries or do you think the threat of Speaker Jeffries, if it actually comes down to it, it looks like it might happen, will be enough to wake up the far right of the Republican Party and say we're screwing this up? No, they no. won't wake up because, again, it's our way or the highway. And I, I do like the analysis that someone gave that said that the Democrats will not help Johnson by voting for him, but enough of them will leave because they have to take a phone call that the majority number needed will keep him in there because they don't want to be handed this crazy train either. Jeff Stein, once again, I'll get the Iowa politics port out later. Thank you, Jeff. By Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Paul, hour two up next. This is Robert Pilot of Native Roots Radio presents I'm Awake, weekdays at 5 p.m. On our show, you'll hear about Native issues like treaties, protecting Mother Earth, and holding our elected officials accountable. Weekly correspondents like Dr. Stately, State Senator Mary Kunish, Robert Lilligren, and Bob Blake update us with the latest news from Turtle Island. Native issues are human issues, and human issues are Native issues. Listen weekdays at 5 p.m. or watch the show on Native Roots Radio social media accounts. ho Tune in for Philosophy Talk, a program that questions everything. Except your intelligence. Coming up, Shakespeare's Outsiders. Some of Shakespeare's characters look down on others because of their race, gender, or disability. Do Shakespeare's plays reveal deep things about identity and status in his time? Or are they just old-timey soap operas? Shakespeare's Outsiders, next time on Philosophy Talk. Philosophy Talk, every Sunday at 8 a.m. on AM 950. The Tom Hartman Show. Now, that's Smart Radio, AM 950, KTNF, St. Louis Park, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the progressive voice of Minnesota. AP News, I'm Ben Thomas. House Speaker Mike Johnson's Ukraine and Israel aid package has received some high-level backing. Saka Magani has a report. The House's hard right flank is not on board, but President Biden is, saying he strongly supports Johnson's plan to push for votes on three packages for Ukraine, Israel, and Indo-Pacific allies, plus a fourth bill with other foreign policy items. Populist conservatives are furious over the idea of funding Ukraine at all, and Johnson risks losing his job. But lawmakers also heard from the Pentagon's top leaders about the need for immediate aid to Kiev. Ukraine right now is, is facing some dire battlefield conditions. Join Chiefs Chairman C.Q. Brown alongside Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who says those conditions are starting to shift in Russia's favor. We're seeing them make incremental gains. Votes on the funding packages are expected Saturday. Sagar Magani, Washington. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will decide for itself whether and how to respond to Iran's major air assault, brushing off calls for restraint from allies. The Senate adjourned the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas after voting to dismiss the charges. President Biden told steelworkers in Pittsburgh this afternoon he's going to triple tariffs on Chinese steel. For too long, the Chinese government has poured state money into Chinese steel companies, pushing them to make so much steel as much as possible, subsidized by the Chinese government. Because Chinese steel companies produce a lot more steel than China needs, it ends up dumping extra steel into the global markets and unfairly low prices. And the prices are unfairly low because China steel companies don't need to worry about making a profit because the Chinese government is subsidizing them so heavily. They're not competing. They're cheating. Sinking tech stocks sent Wall Street lower. The S&P dropped 0.6 percent, its fourth straight loss. This is AP News. Are you the parent of a two to seven year old? Listen closely for an exciting free radio offer. By now you've probably heard of ABC Mouse, the Parents' Choice Award winning online learning program that's actually changing the lives of early learners everywhere. ABC Mouse is like a little one-on-one teacher. It has helped her so much. Right now we're offering a special radio promo to try it free for a month, but you have to go to abcmouse.com slash radio to claim your free month. That's abcmouse.com slash radio. Sponsored by Age of Learning. 
Pizza's here. Oh, great. I love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. They've helped over 5 million people. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, call Consolidated Credit now. Call now, 800-552-6750. That's 800-552-6750. 800-552-6750. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Licensed by Virginia State Corporation. Commission license number DC32. Establishment of a plan may adversely affect the individual's credit rating or credit scores. Non-payment of debt may be creditors to increase financial charges or collections activity, including litigation. True healing happens from within. When you learn to tap into the innate wisdom of your body, transformative healing can begin. Discover the intimate relationship between your mind, body, and nervous system. Learn simple practices that create transformative changes in your body and being. Join us at resolvepainguru.com for your journey into healing from pain, exhaustion, and stress. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Resolve Pain Guru. With their AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for cloudy skies and scattered rain today with a high near 56. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 44. And Thursday, partly sunny with a high near 55. Get your lawn ready for warmer weather. Is it the lush green lawn you want it to be? If not, Natural Lawn can help. They take an organic-based approach to lawn care that's safe for your family and pets. Don't wait for summer. Visit NaturalLawn.com to make your lawn and be worthy. That's NaturalLawn.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. <laughs> Hour number two of the show here on your Wednesday. So let me recap. Okay. Because there, are, like I said, we've had some breaking news here. And thank you to Patrick, who has been kind of keeping me up to date as we go here uh, on the things that are coming out. First of all, going back to that letter, which is insanity. Trump is now wanting a cut of every Republican's fundraising nut dollars that use him in any capacity. So I want you to think about in Minnesota or in Western Wisconsin, all the Republicans who proudly say I'm Trump. Well, guess what? From here on out, 5% of that money has to go to Trump. The letter was sent out the same week as Trump's New York hush money terminal trial began, hearing expected to last six to eight weeks, which is expected to hamper his presence on the cam trail trail since he's required to be in court for each session. Down ballot Republican candidates and committees have long used Trump in fundraising appeals, recognizing that he has support among the party's small dollar fundraising base. But in the letter, Wiles and La Civita reiterated the request that Republicans avoid using certain language and tactics while using Trump's name, image, and likeness. The letter warns that any vendor whose clients ignore the guidelines mentioned above will be responsible for the client's actions and that repeated violations will result in the suspension of business relationships between the vendor and Trump uh, National Committee. This includes a list of uh, rental agreements. So that's basically you can, I guess, rent Mar-a-Lago with this. Um, according to reports, Trump is having trouble closing that fundraising gap with, gap with Biden whose campaign has raised over $190 million. And once again, he's raided the RNC. That money is gone. He is demanding all the big donors don't give to the Republican Party, but to give to him directly. And now he's even going into, so you do a little fundraiser. So let's say you're a Republican Party. You decide to do a cute little pie fundraiser that you're going to make a bunch of pies. People come on in. It's not, it's not a, hey, by the way, I'd think about going to a Republican fundraiser if they had pie. I mean, I, let's be honest, especially, especially, you know, a good chocolate silk. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that or a strawberry rhubarb in a heartbeat. But you do that. You say, oh, I'm going to raise, we're going to raise a thousand dollars. Well, 
five percent of that 50 you know 50 bucks of that is going to trump directly that's insanity man he is the, the he is a musky leech he is just a musky leech wow that's insane i said he was going to do it stein said he was going to do it i can't believe he did it but he did you're welcome america it's it's kind of this childish, immature insight you expect from the Matt McNeil show. <laughs> uh, the other breaking news here, um, Senate voted Wednesday to dismiss all impeachment charges against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, declaring them unconstitutional. There were two articles of impeachment against them. Democrats voted to dismiss the first one, 51-48. Murkowski voted present. They successfully dismissed the second one as well, despite uh, Murkowski joining her party to vote a uh, to voting and proceed uh, with that one. Democrats moved to table the charges outright because Mayorkas's actions as Homeland Security Chief don't rise to the constitutional standard of high crimes and misdemeanors. Something that even Republicans had said, Wait a second, where's the high crimes and misdemeanors on this? And it wasn't there. 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. Steve is in Minneapolis. He wanted to chime in on the sports betting thing I talked about before Stein. Welcome on in, Steve. Hi. Hey, yeah. Uh um, so, um, you know, I work as a handyman and I was in a home today and the man is a serious sports guy and he had some channel on his TV that is not ESPN, but something like it. And I would have thought this thing with this basketball player trashing his career for whatever he gets would have been a big deal, but it was just a little blip on the Chiron on the bottom. And I, I, I'm like, okay, I would have thought this would have been the biggest story of the day. Yeah. So, so now I'm going to tell you an old joke. Steve Garvey, Wade Boggs, and Pete Rose are in a bar. And a gorgeous woman walks in, and Garvey says, you know, I slept with her. And Boggs says, she had my kid. And Pete Rose says, <laughs> you want to bet? <laughs> Wow. All righty. Thanks, Steve. Right. You're, you're, have a good one out there. A little risque on the old language there. No, but that's fine. Um, no, they're not going to report on this. Let me make sure we understand this. You have a player affecting the outcome of a game because they were placing bets on themselves. Because you can do that now. And not a single one, not ESPN, Fox Sports, NBC. Well, NBC Sports is where I got the story. They actually seem to have a pretty lengthy story on this one. And it was the top of the fold. And ESPN did have it, but it was over in the corner. Oh, by the way, here's the over-under on, uh, on the, the NBA playing games. It is uh, the, sports, the sports talk people here in this town. No one, they, they want the money. They want the money from the sports betting places. They want the money. They, I, w whether they are just in it for themselves or they're being told by the upper ups to basically not badmouth this or not downplay this. Sports betting, the way it's going right now, this is the tip of the iceberg. I guarantee you there are players, starters, celebrities in these leagues who are betting on these games and the outcomes of these games. Because you've made it so damn easy. And like I said, the only reason I think they caught this guy for the Toronto Raptors was because he was a backup player. So all of a sudden, a bunch of bets coming in for a backup player is going to raise some red flags. What about all the guys who are starters that are getting all the bets, who get most of the bets, and a bunch of extra ones wouldn't raise a red flag at all? And keep in mind also, because as you said, he is a backup player. He's not a star. There is absolutely no reason for the NBA to not make an example out of this guy. They lose nothing. The team loses nothing. They can sign 20 guys with this guy's abilities. There is nothing, you know, this is the perfect guy to make an example out of. It's, it's crazy, man. And like I said, it, there's a lot of people who keep out there. Well, the, what, what's the big deal? There's no big deal with gambling. Gambling is fun. It's just, it's harmless fun. So I want to put five bucks on the game. What's the harmless fun? Yeah. When the games themselves become so unreliable because so many of the people who are playing in them are wagering on the outcome of them. 
I mean, it's it, it it it's really disturbing. I mean, for a long time, you know, where where you saw this, there was, I mean, I mean, when okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. Okay, so I mean, obviously you had the Chicago White Sox scandal, uh, the 1919 Chicago White Sox, who basically were infiltrated by gamblers and they threw the series against the Cincinnati Reds. And that's when they really put in the rules. Pete Rose was the manager of his team. He was betting against his own team. The reason why he's banned for baseball is that he took away the credibility. What makes a sport a sport is that when they tip off, they drop the puck, first pitch, kickoff, whatever the case may be, that the outcome of the game is not predetermined. That's the WWE, where they have scripts and storylines and drama. That's the WWE. Professional sports, you're not supposed to know who's going to win. And Pete Rose crumbled that. I always say to myself, the far bigger scandal was the NBA referee scandal, where at least one, I think multiple referees were caught gambling on games. And when you, and we, I talked about this at length when that happened, was it Doherty was the guy that his name? Do you remember that? Uh, Tim Donaghy. Tim Donaghy. 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 When they talked about that, I said this, all you have to do is go put Cat in, get him his third foul before the end of the second quarter. You've changed the entire dynamic of that game. You basically, and if if all of a sudden, say, Ant starts co- scoring ball, you know, the, 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 you know, making baskets, all of a sudden you start calling ticky-tack fouls on him. And you're, you're putting the other team on the line. Get them to foul out of the game. It's really easy. I knew the NBA was was broken when you would see such outlandish fouls by players, but because for whatever reason they weren't calling them. I mean, just outright outlandish fouls. That yeah, you just it didn't make any sense. But now you got this, and like I said, the NFL's already having fits. The NFL's already had. I think it's like five or six players where they've had to, you know, find them, you know, ban them from games, stuff like this. They're trying to keep this under control, but the reality is you can, especially if you're a star, you can basically go on out there and, and and bet Otani got his situation got caught when they raided the bookie. Correct. It wasn't that there was any hint at all Otani was doing anything wrong. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, they caught the bookie. And they went through the bookie stuff. It's like, wait a second, here's all these checks from Otani. That's not good. And then all of a sudden it was, oh, it was his translator. Sure it was. Sure, sure it was. When you had, and this is not the same thing. I mean, this is, but when you had the Houston Astros and you had the Boston Red Sox, cheat to win their world series they were sending in signals and people they were they were they were watching using the cameras to figure out the pitches and they were calling in signals and you know it and and you can hear it you can hear it on going back to the broadcast you can hear them banging on garbage cans in the dugout to tell them what pitch is coming down the line you you basically when they when they had that and they didn't pull the world series titles from them you could see it was broken this is, and, and as Patrick said, it's easy to go after this guy. But when you have a superstar, and I'm not going to say any names because I don't want anyone getting upset and super upset with me, but when you have a superstar that's all of a sudden caught red-handed gambling, are you going to do the same thing? And will there be an over-under on what you're going to do there as a punishment? It's it's ludicrous. Um, I want to give a warning to something here, a story that came across that this is when I was a kid, we used to play uh, a game, um, you know, called Hitman, where you ran around with a, a, a suction cup gun. And you, you basically, it started with um, a bunch of people, say like 12 people, and everybody had a name. And once you, you got that person, you got their name, and eventually you got down to one person, and that one person would have all the names, and that would be the winner. And people would run around the city and we would shoot people with suction cup guns and fun, fun. It was, you know, kind of one of those things. 
due to the Republican far right gun kook world that we live in, you can't do a game like that anymore. Especially if one of the 12 or so kids is black, because that's not going to end well when 16 squads roll up, guns drawn, and possibly a kid gets shot because they thought that the fake gun was the real gun. Oh, and by the way, no charges for anybody. You can't do these games. Not with the insanity because of the amount of guns we have in our society. You can't play these games anymore. That's why there is this story I want to give a warning out here. A person reported to be dressed in camouflage carried a long gun in a Brooklyn Park neighborhood on Tuesday morning. Turned out to be a teenager playing a water gun game, according to police. The incident prompted the police to issue a reminder that dangers of carrying firearm lookalikes, also known as facsimile firearms, which is a crime within Brooklyn Park. According to police, officers were called to the 10,500 block of Noble Circle North around 6.45 a.m. on reports of someone dressed in camo, carrying a long rifle, and walking through yards. Police searched the area using a drone located and detained a suspect who officers learned was playing a game known as Senior Assassin. According to the police, the game involves high school age students in our community engaging in a game where they tag each other using water projectile firing guns. We urge all parents and community members to have conversations with their children about the dangers associated with this game. Police shooting. When I was a kid, a common, common toy when I was a kid in, this, in the early 70s was the cap gun. And they looked somewhat real as far as a six shooter. They looked somewhat real silver like this. You put the, the caps in and bang, bang, bang. And it used to be that if you saw a young kid with one of those guns, you, you know, the cops wouldn't even pay attention. It's clearly a kid with a cap gun. You can't say that anymore because there are guns everywhere because this is what the gun kooks wanted. They wanted wheelbarrows full of guns dumped into the streets to create chaos and and fear and we need more guns mentality and the police and I've, I've i've said this before i'll say it again because it really makes the gun kooks bad if you're pro cop you've got to be pro gun control because they've got to treat every one of these cases now as is a active shooter situation they have to so in brooklyn park anywhere in the Twin Cities Metro, or if you are in the state of Minnesota, you need to sit down with your kids and tell them a game that involves anything that looks like a gun is a no-go because someone could end up getting shot. And that's just the deal. Someone could end up dead. So, play responsibly, guns suck. 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. We'll take a break, come back. I got to get into the, well, you'll hear when I get into this, when I come back. It is the Matt McNeil Show here on your Wednesday. The world is Feels good. Oh, your alarm clock is ringing. It's spring. It's spring? Yes. Ding, ding, a ling, ding, a ling. Is it spring? Is it true? You know what that means? I do. It means our show, A Year with Frog and Toad, is playing at Children's Theater Company. I can't wait for everyone to come see us live on stage. What do you think we should do? Well, we'll go swimming, bake cookies, cookies, cookies. And of course, we'll also sing. This is a musical after all. Don't miss A Year with Frog and Toad, playing April 23rd through June 16th. Tickets at childrenstheater.org. Gear up for a day of community spirit. Edina Rides for Education invites you to roll into a fun day of biking on Saturday, May 4th, starting at Fred Richards Park. Organized by the Rotary Club of Edina Morningside, they're all about service above self, and they're calling on you to join the ride. Opt for a leisurely 5- or 10-mile route and explore the scenic, car-free bike paths Edina has to offer. And here's the best part. Your ride with Edina Ride supports local educational nonprofits like Edina Give and Go, funding grants for students in need at Edina Public Schools. These funds help students that would be unable to pay fees associated with arts, academics, and athletics. Be a partner in sustaining organizations like Edina Give and Go. Registration is easy at edinarides.com. 
Take advantage of early bird pricing, just $25 for adults and $15 for kids. So gear up and pedal for a purpose on Saturday, May 4th with Edina Rides for Education. More at edinarides.com. Hi, I'm Mary T, inviting you to experience our integrative Mary T Health and Wellness Center, offering physical, occupational, speech, and lymphedema therapies. Experience our guided imagery, meditation, Tibetan medicine, dry needling, massage services, including cupping and oncology massage. Sign up for our free wellness screenings and learn more at marytwellness.com. All major health insurance providers are accepted. Come for therapy, experience wellness. Seward Co-op offers convenient grab-and-go options as well as hot bars and salad bars at both the Friendship and our newly remodeled Franklin store. Breakfast items are available daily until 11 a.m. and brunch is served all day every Sunday. Our weekly lunch and dinner menus highlight culinary traditions and cuisines from around the world. We offer vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free items every day. 90% of the ingredients used are from organic, local, and small-scale producers whenever possible. Learn more at sewer.coop. AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It's the Matt McNeil Show. 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. You hear all those right-wing media outlets and uh, the the State Patrol and all the pro-cop guys, all of a sudden kind of their sphincters kind of puckering a little bit because all of a sudden they don't want to be nearly as loud as they were. There's a reason for that. The family of Ricky Cobb the, the second announced on Wednesday they are suing two Minnesota State Patrol troopers involved in his fatal shooting during a traffic stop in Minneapolis last summer. At a press conference surrounded by attorneys and activists, Cobb's parents made the civil litigation official, although attorneys for the family made it clear early on in the civil action was looming. Allegations outlined in the federal lawsuit accused the troopers of violating Cobb's civil rights through an unreasonable seizure and excessive use of force resulting in Cobb's death. Would agree. Now, once again, I want to make sure I stop and, and just say this. Fleeing police, do you think fleeing a police officer is an instantaneous death sentence in the United States? Now, I don't want this, this bull crud about, he could have had a nuke in that car and going right for a, a kindergarten where there was puppies. Thank God they murdered him, killed him, shot him, defended themselves. The, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Basically, he did not flash a weapon. He drove away. If you think what Londrigan did was good policing, then what you're saying is, I feel it should be an instantaneous death sentence for a person who drives away from a police officer, which it will be a hoot when that's a white person getting shot by a cop. You basically, oh, I don't know if that's necessarily the deal, but you know, it probably will happen eventually. Eventually. I don't think we should have an instantaneous death penalty for someone who just basically tries to drive away from the police. I don't think it should be an instantaneous death penalty. Just don't. I don't. Nope. I don't think it should be an instantaneous death penalty. And the people who are saying good kill, you're sick, twisted people. This was not good police work. This was not. This was not good police work. Now, I have said from the get-go, I don't care what Mary Artie's doing. I think she's she's being she's on a fool's errand for sure. Because the way the state law is written, you can have an instantaneous death penalty as long as the officer goes, I was scared. I was so scared. I was so scared. I was so scared. And as long as you do that, guess what? You can murder anybody. You can shoot anyone you want to. And I highly doubt, well, I shouldn't say that. There are some very rare extenuating circumstances, but for the most part, you're probably going to get you know off the hook. What you see with this is that the, as the law is written, you, they're not going to be found guilty. But then come the civil charges. So the same people who sit there and will say, how do dare you question this quality police work? All of a sudden, when it came comes time to pay the bill, all of a sudden, they're quietly staring down at their shoes going, I hope, I hope they don't ask me any questions. 
I'm going to quietly ignore them. Because you know what? They don't have any problem with us taxpayers paying this amount. Exactly. Cobb 33 was shot by Trooper Ryan Londrigan the night of July 31st on Interstate 94 in North Minneapolis. Londrigan and his colleague, Brett uh, Seedy, are both named as defendants in the lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court in Minnesota. Londrigan is also charged in Hennepin County District Court with second-degree unintentional murder, manslaughter, first-degree assault, providing his service weapon, striking Cobb twice in the torso after Cobb shifted his vehicle into drive as troopers attempted to remove him from the vehicle. Didn't drive away. He just shifted his car into drive. And yeah, I just, I don't want to chase you down. So bang, bang, stay with me, buddy. <laughs> Please, God. <sighs> Londrigan's attorney, Chris Madel, argues that Londrigan used deadly force to protect himself in the CD. Of course, I was scared. National civil rights attorney, uh, Bakari Sellers of South Carolina, Harry Daniels of Georgia, F. Clayton Tyler of Minnesota, jointly filed the lawsuit on Wednesday on behalf of Cobb's mother, Naira Miller-Fields, who is the personal representative of Cobb's estate. It comes two months after Cobb's attorney sent a letter to the state seeking $25 million for Cobb's death. $25 million. I'll tell you what, if the state patrol thinks he didn't do anything wrong, they can pay that out of their budget. Because $25 million is a lot of money. That's $5 basically for every person in the state of Minnesota. So for my family, because my son is now 22. So for me and my two girls and my wife, that's 20 bucks. I have to pay 20 bucks because this guy shot this guy. I don't want to pay 20 bucks. Can the state patrol send me my money back? Because I don't, I mean, I don't, I didn't do this. I didn't, I didn't, you know, pull a gun because he was black. I didn't have a finger on the trigger because he was black. I didn't shoot him because he put his car into drive because, and he was black. I didn't do that. Why should I, as a taxpayer, have to pay for this? Why should anyone? Why should Patrick? Why should Brett? Why should you? You didn't do anything wrong. But that's all of a sudden, when I talk about those Titan sphincters, all of a sudden, when the bill comes due, they want us to pay for their malfeasance and bad behavior. Their actions, which they argue are righteous and just. They're the ones saying, good kill. They're the ones saying quality police work. And then when all of a sudden it's not, it's proven not all of a sudden, well, the state needs to bail us out. You pay the bill. You do. I don't know what your state patrol budget is. I'm sure 25 million is not going to kill you. You pay the 25 million out of your, if you feel as if it was a quality police work, then do not burden us lowly taxpayers with your bad behavior. If the court, if the court, you decide to, 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 to basically, you know, take this to court or settle out of court, well then you pay it. Don't look at the taxpayers and say, we decided to put this to bed. No, 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 no. If his actions, as you describe, you describe are righteous and just then you should be sitting there with your checkbook saying, hey, here's the deal. It was righteous and just, so I'll stand by it. If, if we have to write the check, I'll scribble this check out right now. No, I should not have to pay 20 bucks for you killing Ricky Cobb. And if we did that standard, if the taxpayers weren't burdened by this, I guarantee you there'd be a crap ton of training all of a sudden about how not to shoot people who put a car into drive. How not to pull a gun and have a finger on a trigger because it's a black guy. If all of a sudden those civil cases went out of those police budgets or the county sheriff's budgets or the state patrol budgets, I guarantee you there would be a lot of talk about making sure you dotted I's and crossed T's before anyone pulled a gun. What, where, where's your, where's your spokesperson now? Where's your spokesperson now about this? Should, should the taxpayers be out re responsible? Will the state patrol cover this 25 million? 
Do us a favor. Hey, it's already taxpayer dollars, but at least it's not new taxpayer dollars. It comes out of your budget. There are consequences for it. You think it's good, righteous behavior. You think it was all good. Then you pay the bill. I, we already know they're not going to, they're going to, this is why their fingers are tightening. They're basically sitting there going, we've got to make sure that, you know, we got to, we got to keep complaining about how great the police work was. We got to go out there and how dare you question these police officers, get your, that right-wing media all fired up, leaking them all the information, leaking them all that, all those, those leads and everything like that. But all of a sudden, when it's time for us to pay the bill, funny story, you guys don't present it as bad behavior by cop leads to $25 million in taxpayer dollars being paid out to the victims. All of a sudden, as we, you know, I guess they got lucky. Yeah, they got lucky when you put the bullets into their loved one. No, you guys pay the bill. As a matter of fact, why don't we have a sign up here? You think this is good quality police work? Fine. I'm, I don't think it was. I don't want to pay my 20 bucks, which means you guys will have to pay a little bit more. And if we did that, by the way, if you did that, if all of a sudden you had to, to you know, if you stood by this, guarantee you most of the people who are pro-cop all of a sudden would be like, oh, I, don't, I don't want my money to go to this. And once again, it would fall on a handful of people. And let them pay for it. Once again, if you're if you're out there saying this was justified and righteous, then pay the bill yourself. 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. More on this one in return. It's the Matt McNeil Show right here on AM 950. Now at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces, we have new Fireplace Extraordinaire Hybrid Fireplace Inserts. These wood-burning inserts are made in two sizes and nine different designs to fit your existing fireplace and enhance your home's architecture. They not only feature a big, beautiful fire viewing area, they heat so efficiently that they qualify for a 30% tax credit, which can save you $2,000. Advancing the art of fire is the motto of Fireplace Extraordinaire. For 30 years, the EPA has certified all wood-burning heaters for clean burning. But these new hybrids add a catalytic combustor. They burn even longer, more efficiently, and cleaner. To design these inserts to work well and look good is Fireplace Extraordinaire's Art of Fire. At woodlandstoves.com, you can see the many options. Work with the chimney and installation experts. They not only install, but will guide you if you want to install yourself. Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces has over 35 working wood, gas, and electric units on display at the corner of East Franklin and Riverside Avenue in Minneapolis. Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces, out of the ordinary products and services. Connections Radio Show is all about tapping into our heart wired hunger to connect we examine meaningful connections to ourselves our community and the world around us by opening the door to innovative insights by a wide variety of interesting guests we'll make the connections to something bigger than ourselves join me Lori Fitz your host of connections radio show and together we'll make the connections Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. on a.m. 950 the progressive voice of Minnesota turn to auto technical with your vehicle donation even though Auto Technical is a small nonprofit, we have helped more families with transportation than any organization in Minnesota. Since 94, we have reconditioned donated vehicles so they have a higher tax benefit. Call Richard at 612-919-5526, 612-919-5526, or autotech.org. As winter bids farewell, step into spring adventure with Next Chapter Booksellers. They're more than just a bookstore. It's your hub for spring fun. Discover bestsellers, attend in-store events like meet and greets with authors, join book clubs, and delight in children's story time. Challenge your mind with a fun puzzle or get a board game for those rainy spring days. There's no shortage of things to do at Next Chapter Booksellers off Snelling and Grand in St. Paul or nextchapterbooksellers.com. With your AM 950 weather, I'm Brett Johnson. Look for cloudy skies and scattered rain today with a high near 56. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 44. And Thursday, partly sunny with a high near 55. Experience a delicious dinner out at Nightingale. Indulge in the Nightingale burger, roasted duck breast, and more exciting dishes like the roasted broccoli bruschetta and smoked chicken liver plate. Takeout orders available at your convenience, and Nightingale is open daily 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. with their full menu until midnight. Or at NightingaleMTLS.com. 
Could have been a little less strange that night. I was feeling down and my mood wasn't right. Hey, I'm 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It's the Matt McNeil Show. No, I'm getting tired of the ugly other side of the coin. Lots of lots of pro cop people in the police departments, all these things in the right, far right media in this city talk about how you should never question a cop ever. And then all of a sudden there's a $12 million payout and a $20 million payout and a $50 million payout, all of taxpayer dollars. And all of a sudden those big megaphones get really I think for the for the people, I think this is a good solution. You think this is a good solution? You know what? It would be a good solution. The dude not being dead, and you not basically stealing money out of my pocket to pay for your bad behavior. And don't give me this crap about I, I, these these right wing guys. It's like I can already tell these right wing guys are out there going, yeah, so so he, so he gets his big lawyer, so they're going to get their big payout. No. They want their kid. This wouldn't exist if their their child was still alive. So stop acting like this is some sort of planned event. You guys, you guys, you guys are so freaking warped on this stuff. Don't tell me, oh, well, civil cases are a lot easier to prove but they're still proving them, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't have shot the guy. <laughs> and so, and once again, all these anti-tax Republicans, all of them, all of a sudden their sphincters tighten up too. They all of a sudden, all of a sudden don't want to talk anymore about it. I don't, or, you know, I, I don't necessarily think this, but this is this is what happened. I don't want to, I have no comment on that situation. No, you you are the one saying you are the ones saying, don't question it, good quality behavior, good police action, bum ba bum ba bum All right, fine. Then pass a bill that says only Republicans will pay that tax. You guys can all pay for it. I don't, I don't want to pay for it. I shouldn't have to pay for it. I didn't kill the guy. And it's really hard for you for, to argue to me, well, it was quality police work, but still we still need to pay $25 million to the guy. No, pay it yourselves. Get tired of this crap. This is um, Sellers. We've seen the media. We've seen the police union. We've seen everyone in the city act like Ricky Cobb is not the victim in this case. People have treated this officer like he was the victim in this case. And we're here today to say that Ricky Cobb lost his life. He should be here today. Yeah, Cobb is the victim here. You may not like that, but... If you don't think that he is the victim, then what you're saying is you feel as if there should be an instantaneous death penalty for trying to leave a scene of a crime. I don't think there should be. Well, and it wasn't even a crime. It was a, it was a, what was it? It was a, they had a, a warrant for him. So they pulled him over. They say, have a, they, and once again, he never really responded. He kept saying, why do you want me out of the car? And they tried to yank him out of the car. He sees what's going on. He leaves it away. So it's not, he didn't even leave the scene of the climb, the scene of the confrontation. So that's what it is. You want to have the death penalty if someone tries to flee the scene of the confrontation. The, the cops don't want to have to run this guy down. Just put a few bullets in him. Save us some time. Stay with me, buddy. I don't think we should have an instantaneous death penalty for this. I don't think we should have an instantaneous, if someone tries to, to flee a police officer, Nope, I don't think there should be an instantaneous death penalty handed out. I don't think so. And so, yeah, it get you know, if Londrigan's the real victim here, if the victim is proven to be the guilty party and has to pay 25 million, don't look to me. He's the hero in your book. You should scratch out that check. The lawsuit accuses the troopers of unnecessarily seizing Cobb by ordering him out of his vehicle and refusing to explain whether he was under arrest or the reason he was being detained. Minor details that Policing 101 should have told them they need to tell him. It also claims that force used to the seizure was excessive, unjustifiable, and unlawful. I would say having the gun drawn, safety off, finger on the trigger, indeed. At the traffic stop, true. And, and once again, I'm saying this. The way the state law is written, written he's not going to face charges for it. Because once again, all he has to do is, because thanks to the Republicans, say, I was scared. I was scared. I was so scared. And you can murder anybody. 
You can cut them right down. Um, at the traffic stop, troopers re- attempted to remove Cobb from his vehicle after learning he'd been accused of violating a domestic order for protection, or as Republicans and the far right media call it, a death sentence. The Ramsey County Sheriff's Office issued a 72 hour request for agencies to pick up and, and hold Cobb. The request, which is not a warrant, but grants law enforcement probable cause to detain, was set to expire later that morning of the traffic stop, but the order for protection was filed by the mom of Cobb's younger children. The lawsuit alleges the troopers did not attempt to de-escalate the situation. They did not have reasonable suspicion that Cobb was armed and posed any threat of harm. The gun was located on the floor behind the center council of Cobb's vehicle, but the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehensions shared at the beginning of its investigation that Cobb was never holding a gun. Troopers never referenced a gun in Cobb's vehicle, according to the dash and body cam video. So there was no gun, at least none that played any role here from his side. Cobb's hands were in the air, the full view of the trooper, the moments leading up to the shooting, the lawsuit states his hands weren't touching the steering wheel or gear shift until Lundgren reached inside the front passenger window to unlock the door. As he opened the door, Cobb put his foot on the brake, and, um, uh, put his foot on the brake and moved his hand to the shifter, put the vehicle into drive, removing his foot from the brake. Cobb's vehicle moved forward several feet while Sadio on the driver's side leaned in on the unsecure Cobb's seatbelt. Cobb stepped on the brake and uh, Londrigan threw his firearm, pointing it at Cobb. Londrigan leaned his torso inside, drun drawn, yelled at Cobb to get out. CD grabbed at Cobb and took out the foot off the brake again, caused the vehicle to lurch forward. According to the lawsuit, Londrigan fired. Cobb's vehicle proceeded down the interstate for one quarter mile before it crashed, and he was dead. The lawsuit, which doesn't, la- so yeah, they weren't they weren't about to get killed. They weren't about to get killed. No, nope, they weren't. They just didn't want to go chase him down. This was this was a shooting by for convenience. That's that's what it was. This was they didn't want to. They, he's going to leave. I, we don't want to chase him. Bang bang. See, okay, stay with me, buddy. Come on. The lawsuit, which doesn't list a monetary demand, says if this is that is a direct result of the troopers' wrongful acts and omissions. Cobb's family has suffered financial losses of the amount to be determined by a jury. At the time of this incident, uh, Ka, uh, uh, Cobb, the deceased Cobb was an unarmed man stopped for a minor traffic violation with no outstanding warrants and was not threatening or acting violently towards the officers on the scene, the lawsuit says. Nonetheless, defendant uh, CD attempted to wrestle the, uh, the, the victim Cobb out of the vehicle, and defendant Londergren drew his firearm on Cobb and shot him almost immediately, even with the defendant positioned in a leaning position over Cobb in the front seat. Yeah, that's, by the way, we should mention that. Good police officer gun safety training. I'm going to shoot towards my partner. Bang, bang, bang. You're lucky you didn't shoot your partner, you fool. But once again, you know, it's, it's, he was stopped for a traffic, a minor traffic violation, had no outstanding warrants, was not threatening and acting violently towards the officers on the scene, or as Republicans and the right wing media and all the police goons are going for right now, a quality kill. That's your argument, not mine. And once again, I don't think these guys are going to go to jail at all because the law says I was scared is good enough. But when it comes to the civil trial and all of a sudden you are asking the taxpayers to cover your crap ass policing, which this is crap ass policing, you guys can't hide your checkbooks fast enough. Well, we thought this was just that we went, you know. This we consider this this situation closed. Yeah, as long as we all scratch out a huge check, I'm tired of this. Millions and millions and millions in findings. Doesn't everyone else look and say, "How are you guys so above criticism, but yet are constantly draining our tax accounts with your crap ass behavior?" Why should the people who didn't shoot Ricky Cobb have to pay for the people who did shoot Ricky Cobb? Once again, they're not going to go to jail. (sighs) Please. They're not going to go to jail. Moriarty is overreaching. And I don't know. Yeah, she's overreaching. She's not. you, You can't fix this unless you fix it at the state level. And frankly, I don't think anyone there, even a lot of the Democrats have the guts to go on out there and say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be shooting people for a traffic stop. 
just, heaven forbid, because the minute you do it, it's like, well, take a look at the, take a look at the school resource officers. Unless I can beat the living crap out of a 12 year old, our schools aren't safe. <laughs> Seriously. Those, unless I can put him in the prone position and kneel on him like he was George Floyd, that I, you know, the schools are, are just, they're crazy. C- chaos. You, you know, you're not going to fix this is This is just the way it is. We have the instantaneous death penalty for a minor track violation someone's trying to drive away from. But like I said, I think at this point, since we can't deal with this on the front end, then why the hell are we paying for this? Why don't we have a bill that says, well, if your police department is responsible for this and you consider it good police behavior, and the police chief is out there saying, I stand by my officers, or the head of the state patrol is saying, I stand by my officers, or the, the sheriff says, I stand by my officers, and then all of a sudden the civil verdict comes against you, and it's $20 million. Yeah, why don't we have a law that says that comes out of their budget? You, you can't. You, 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 damn it, Matt! Exactly. Exactly. All of a sudden, you see, eventually, if you run around the house enough times, you run into yourself. There you go. Um, Minnesota, Minnesota Peace and uh, Police and Peace Officers Association and Trade Association paying Londrigan's legal fees sent another letter to Walls in recent weeks asking him to intervene uh, and get the case away from Moriarty. The latest request stems from more. State Patrol use of force experts opining that Londrigan acted in accordance with his training and didn't violate the use of force policy. Hey, you know, the death penalty is legal in Minnesota. You, do you know that? The policy says he can shoot him right there. Bang, 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 bang. Right at his partner, too. And a beginning attorney's office, hire, own hired expert found Trooper Londrigan acted lawfully. Now we're hearing State Patrol's own trainers and Moriarty are interviewed. Blah, 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 blah. Once again, they're all saying this is action. So if that's the case, then why are we paying for this? This should come out of you. If this was all legitimate, this should come out of your budget. Or we should be able to fix this. You cannot continue to use the taxpayers of the state of Minnesota as your never-ending stream of bailing your asses, your bad policing asses out of, out, out of, out of trouble. I'm tired of it. I am tired of paying for bad police work. On Tuesday, GOP U.S. Representative Fishbach with Emmer, Stauber, and Finstead sent a letter to the House Republican Majority Judiciary Committee requesting an investigation into Moriarty's alleged abuse of power, blah, 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 blah. Will they care at all about the? Oh, oh, these are taxpayer dollars. They have no problem spending. That's the great hypocrisy of it all, isn't it? Fishbach and Emmer and Stauber and Finstad who sit there and go, we need to have accountability with our taxes. Uh, they want us to pay 25 million, which is basically five bucks for every person in the state to cover this. Well, that's a good investment. Is it? Oh, that's right. Fishbach and Emmer and Stauber and Opie down in one, all their sphincters are going to tighten up too. And they're going to say, no comment. I see you. 952-946-6205, 952-946-6205. We'll take a break. Come on back. It's the Matt McNeil Show on your Wednesday. Hi, I'm Kelly Kirk. I'm Chad Larson. And I'm Joe Kirk. Your hosts for Searching for Service. Tune into Rotary's influential show and podcast, sharing touching stories of service locally and abroad. We bring you weekly guests that connect, inform, and inspire our listeners on all things service. We highlight diverse service opportunities that appeal to both Rotarians and people driven to serve in their communities. Tune in Sundays at 3 p.m. or anytime via podcast. It's time to stop searching and start serving. The 2024 Consumer Reports Best Vehicle Edition is out, and once again, Toyotas from Rudy Luther Toyota dominate the field. 
Four Toyota models make their top picks for 2024. The Prius, the Camry Hybrid Prime, the RAV4 Prime, and the Highlander Hybrid. Consumer Reports recommends all the following Toyotas. The Prius, the Prius Prime, the Corolla, the Corolla Hybrid, the Camry, the Camry Hybrid, the Sienna, the Corolla Cross, the Corolla Cross Hybrid, the RAV4, the RAV4 Hybrid, the RAV4 Prime, the Highlander, and the Highlander Hybrid. See for yourself. Visit Rudy Luther Toyota and test drive one today, 394 and 169 in Golden Valley. Hey, it's Patrick for Zero Res. I'm going to get right into it. You should call Zero Res to beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking by calling our cleaning heroes today. You should think about the dust, dander, and bacteria that's been breeding in your carpet all winter long with nowhere to go. And don't forget about your air ducts. If they're dirty, your air quality suffers. Indoor air quality is an issue year-round, but all that pollen is getting ready to come out of hibernation and into your home. This month, get three rooms zero resified starting at just $129 and take $75 off any air duct cleaning. You owe it to yourself and your family to breathe happy, healthy, and clean. Call 952-ZERO-RES or go to ZeroResMinnesota.com and ask for the AM950 special. Zero Res, backward or forward, spells the same. By the way, and once again, I want to make sure I'm very clear. The way the law is written, they're not guilty. They're not going to be there. And once again, all the what are the police doing? What are the state patrol doing? They're bringing up all these experts to say he did nothing wrong. Fine. Why is that only... You should be held to those comments and those standards on the criminal trial and not the civil trial. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? These officers are not going to go to jail, but then you're expecting the taxpayers to pay for their guilty behavior. Unless you can scramble in there and get a kind of, well, we're going to come to an agreement and uh, we think this is the best to put this behind us. No, stop wasting my taxpayer dollars, man. If this is the only avenue I have to complain about this that has some teeth, well, then, damn it, chomp, chomp, 952-946-6205. I did want to mention this. I've been wanting to mention this story for about a week. The Florida mother who was sentenced Tuesday to a month in prison and three months at home confinement for stealing Biden's uh, Joe Biden da- Biden's daughter's diary four years ago and trying to sell it to the conservative group of Project Veritas. Amy Harris was sentenced in Manhattan federal court by judge Laura Taylor Swain, who called the Palm beach, Florida woman's actions despicable. Harris pleaded, pled guilty to a conspiracy charge, August 22nd, uh, August 22, rather said August 22, admitting that she received $20,000 of the 40,000 that was paid by project Veritas for personal items belonging to the president's daughter, Ashley Biden. Veritas founded in 2010 identifies itself as a news organization, like a lot of right-wing news outlets do here in this state, but they're not. It's, it is best known for conducting hidden camera stings uh, that then they deeply edit to try to embarrass Democrats. A fearful Harris apologized for enabling Ashley Biden's, uh, for enabling Ashley Biden's private writings to be sold after she found the diary, the, the crocodile tears, and other items at a friend's Delray Beach, Florida home in 2020, where prosecutors say Ashley Biden believed her items were safely stored after she temporarily stayed there in spring of 2020. I do not believe I'm above the law, Harris said after a prosecutor urged the prison sentence following her failure to appear at numerous sentencing dates on the grounds she was consumed with caring for her two children's eight and six. I'm a survivor of a long-term domestic abuse and sexual trauma, and she told the judge, well, maybe we should have a diary that we could sell this under. With a lawyer for Ashley Biden observing from the courtroom spectator section, Harris apologized for her president's, to the president's daughter, saying she regrets making her childhood and life public. In announcing the sentence, Swain noted that Harris and a co-defendant, Robert Curlander of nearby Jupiter, Florida, at first tried unsuccessfully to sell Ashley Biden's belongings to then-President Donald Trump's campaign. The judge said Harris, besides being motivated by greed, had hoped the impact the national political landscape. Curlander, who has not been sentenced, and Harris had each pled guilty to conspiracy to transport stolen property across state lines. Defense attorney Anthony Soretti urged no prison time, citing his client's traumatic life, blah, 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 blah. She carries the shame and stigma of her actions. Oh, no, I, I don't think she does. <laughs> no, she might now. Assistant U.S. Attorney Robert Sol- uh, Solberman 
urged the prison sentence saying Harris had exhibited a pattern of disrespect for the law and the justice system. Ms. Harris is not the victim in this case. Ms. Biden is the victim in this case. He said Harris in the summer of 2020 had stolen Ashley Biden's diary, a digital storage card, books, clothing, luggage, and everything else she could get her hands on in the hopes she could make as much money as she could. She wanted to damage Mr. Mrs. Biden's father. Harris was told to speak and uh, was told to report to prison in July and she left the courthouse. She declined to speak. The lawyer for Ashley Biden has also declined to comment, although she submitted a letter to the judge on the client's behalf early in the day, but was not immediately put on the court record. Uh, no, she, she, yeah, let's, she intended to do this. She wanted to do this. She's only regretful because she got caught. That's the only reason why she regrets any of this is that all of a sudden she's going to go to jail. Uh, and, and that is, you know, she's, she basically, what's, what's the term here? She's got, uh, she's been in prison in three months. Uh, she goes to, uh, a month in prison, three months at home confinement for stealing the, this. I think she got off easy, frankly, but you, she, this was, this was basically, I'm going to destroy someone else's life if I can for a few bucks. I, <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think the boyfriend, from what I've read, he was the one that was the real political guy. He was trying to make this to where it was her. But I think that no matter what, I, you know, no one legitimate necessarily was going to necessarily pay big bucks to get like the, the New York Times or ABC or CBS. They weren't going to pay for this to get this 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 diary. So th their options were limited to people that wanted to smear Biden. So that's why I think it became political. But needless to say, don't buy these crocodile tears from this woman. She 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 made her bed and she gets to go sleep for at least a month in jail with it. Native Roots Radio is up next. Have a good one. Till tomorrow. See ya. Hi, this is Philip Anthony, the host of the Downright.